a very warm welcome to the participants of the Proteomics Advanced Winter School 2021. Presented by Proteomics Lab, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Day 1 Introduction to Proteomics Lecture 1 Basics of Proteomics This proteomics The proteome describes the protein complement expressed by the genome or more precisely we can say the protein complement of a given cell at a given time including the set of all the protein isoforms and its modifications. The study of entire compendium of proteins which are encoded by the genome is known as proteomics. In this slide, I have illustrated the complexity of human proteome as compared to the genome or transcriptome. The extent of diversity and complexity due to alternative splicing and post translational modifications is tremendous. Therefore, studying proteins and proteome are very important. What are different steps involved in the proteome analysis? As shown here, the protein extraction, protein separation, protein identification and protein characterization. These are the major steps which are involved in proteome analysis. The protein extraction from whole cells, tissue or organism is first requirement for proteome analysis. Protein separation and quantification is achieved by various proteomic techniques including gel based techniques such as two dimensional electrophoresis and gel free techniques such as eye trap mass spectrometry based techniques. The functional characterization of proteins using novel proteomic platforms open new horizon for exploration in biology. The proteomic discipline can be grouped under two major disciplines abundance and function based proteomics. The abundance based proteomics aims to measure the abundance of protein expression whereas the functional proteomics aims to determine the role of proteins by addressing protein interactions and their biochemical activities. So, how did proteomics field emerge? As you can see in the time scale here shown in the slide, advancement of various techniques such as two dimensional electrophoresis and mass spectrometry, genome sequencing information and computational algorithm together led to the emergence of proteomics field. Proteomics research originates from classical protein chemistry and it has embraced new high throughput techniques to analyze complex samples. Many of the techniques used under the modern proteomic umbrella for example, two dimensional electrophoresis, mass spectrometry have actually originated several years ago. So, what is new? The technological advancements in protein analysis with increased sensitivity, resolution and capability to carry out high throughput studies has led to the transition from protein chemistry to new field of proteomics. Protein analysis by mass spectrometry was challenging due to complete degradation of samples 
with available hard ionization techniques. This limitation was overcome by soft ionization techniques such as MILDI and electron spray ionization. These techniques have greatly improved the proteomic studies as they facilitated mass spectrometry analysis of protein samples. Protein sequencing by Edmund degradation is time consuming and cumbersome. Several rounds of sequencing are required for analysis of polypeptide chains. However, peptide sequencing by mass spectrometry is much faster and allows large number of samples to be analyzed in a short time. Another aspect development of immobilized pH gradient strips facilitated proteomic analysis using two dimensional electrophoresis. The pH gradient in tube gels are established by ampholite gradients, which are not always very stable and tend to break down upon addition of the concentrated samples. Analysis of protein mixture by two dimensional electrophoresis using tube gels often resulted into variations in the gels. The problem of reproducibility was overcome to a large extent by the development of immobilized pH gradient strips or IPG strips. Minimal gel to gel variation was observed when samples were run by two dimensional electrophoresis employing IPG strips, which made this technique suitable for the large scale proteomic applications. Completion of several genome sequencing projects. Genome sequencing of several organisms including humans have been successfully completed and these genome databases are extremely useful in correlation of gene and protein sequences. Several databases are now readily available which can easily help in identification of gene sequences of a protein which has been sequenced by mass spectrometry. Genome represents an important starting point towards understanding complexity of biological functions. However, proteins provide a much more meaningful insight into the mysteries of essential biological processes. To obtain better understanding of cellular processes and regulation, there has been an increasing interest in studying proteome. There are several reasons why one need to study proteomics. First, the genomic DNA contains large stretches of non-coding regions. The pre-mRNA is synthesized from the genomic DNA by the process of transcription. mRNA contains both exons, the coding sequences as well as introns which are intervening non-coding sequences. By involving series of steps, finally, the free 3 prime hydroxyl group of the first exon attacks the 5 prime end of the second exon such that they are joined together to give the mature mRNA. Second important factor is single gene can give rise to 
multiple proteins. The alternative splicing is a process by which exons or coding sequences of pre mRNA produced by transcription of a gene are combined in different ways during RNA splicing, resulting mature mRNA give rise to different protein products by translation, most of which are isoforms of one another. The diversity of proteins encoded by a genome is greatly increased due to alternative splicing. Third important factor is post translational modification of proteins. The proteins obtained by translation undergoes folding and various post translational modifications such as phosphorylation, glycosylation, alkylation, hydroxylation etc. to give the final functional protein. The PTMs generate diversity, complexity and heterogeneity of gene products and its functional consequences can be modulation in protein dynamics and alteration of its functional activity. During the last decade, we have witnessed the revolution in biology as this discipline has fully embraced omics tools. The emergence of genome wide analysis to understand cellular DNA, RNA and protein content by employing genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics at systems level has revolutionized our understanding of control networks that mediate the cellular processes. These concepts will be discussed in first module. Genes are the blueprint for life and proteins are the effector molecules. Due to this fact, the central dogma has guided research at the systems level. After completion of human genome sequence, number of genes around 25,000 are surpassed by an estimated number of proteins in millions. Studying large scale study of protein structure and function requires a thorough understanding of protein composition and their various structural levels by employing high throughput tools. Proteins play an important role in essential characteristic of living systems, how they function and replicate themselves through intricate molecular interactions. Amino acids constitutes the basic monomeric units of proteins which are joined together by peptide bonds. The linear sequence of amino acids constitutes the primary structure. Folding of polypeptides or protein chain into regular structures like alpha helices, beta sheets, turns and loops give rise to secondary structure. The three dimensional compactly folded structure of proteins makes tertiary structure which represents overall organization of secondary structural elements in three dimensional space. The quaternary structure refers to the interactions between individual proteins 
subunits in a multi subunit complex. Sickle cell anemia is caused due to a single nucleotide substitution which converts a glutamic acid residue to valine in the beta chain of hemoglobin. Thalassemia is caused due to abnormalities in hemoglobin synthesis. Protein folding is an elegant example of biological self assembly. Understanding the mechanisms through which protein folding takes place remains challenging for the scientific community. Enfilson tested the ability of reduced and unfolded protein to spontaneously fold into its native state by using protein ribonuclease A. The study established that the primary amino acid sequence of a protein content all of the information necessary for the proper folding into its native form. Protein folding is a cooperative process which arises from simultaneous formation of multiple interactions within a polypeptide chain. Protein folding is thermodynamically favorable and a spontaneous process. The folding efficiency could be limited by processes such as protein aggregation. The molecular chaperones are designed to assist in protein refolding. From complex proteome, it is challenging to purify a protein in a single chromatographic step. Therefore, sequential prefractionation steps involving different modes of chromatography becomes necessary. The gel filtration chromatography separates protein on the basis of difference in size. When a protein sample is applied to the column, the small proteins passes from the pores of the beads while the larger proteins are excluded. Therefore, this technique is also known as molecular exclusion technique. The ion exchange chromatography relies on differences between number of charges and distribution of charge groups in defined pH and solvent solutions. Affinity chromatography is based on affinity of protein to other biomolecules where protein of interest binds through a specific interaction. Studying genome of an organism by employing sequencing and genome mapping is known as genomics. Several genome sequencing projects that aim to elucidate the complete genome sequence of organisms have been undertaken by several research groups all over the world. From a genomic library, clones were isolated and ordered into a detailed physical map. Further, individual clones were sequenced by shotgun sequencing to provide the complete genome sequence. Recently, next generation sequencing NGS strategies have dramatically increased the pace of sequencing by several order of magnitudes. Next generation sequencing based on nanopore structures is known as nanopore sequencing. Transcriptomics a study of all the mRNA molecules expressed by a particular cell type of an organism is known as transcriptomics. 
the transcriptomic analysis measures the genes that are being actively expressed at any given time and varies significantly with external environmental conditions. Various techniques such as microarrays, QRT-PCR, etc. have been widely used for transcriptional analysis. In a microarray experiment, the mRNA from control and test samples are extracted and reverse transcribed into its corresponding cDNA. The cDNA samples are labeled with Psi 5 and Psi 3 dyes and mixed cDNA sample is incubated on printed DNA microarray. This allows hybridization to occur between the probe oligonucleotide on array surface and the labeled cDNA sample of interest. In this manner, expression level of thousands of genes can be measured and analyzed simultaneously. Different type of proteomic technologies such as two-dimensional electrophoresis, mass spectrometry, microarrays and label-free techniques will be discussed in more detail later. In omics era, technological advancement in genomics, proteomics and metabolomics have generated large-scale data sets in all the aspects of biology. These large data sets have motivated the computational biology and systems approaches with objective of understanding the biological system as a whole. The system biology and biological network modeling aims to understand the biological processes as whole system rather than the isolated parts by synergistic application of experiment, theory, technology and modeling. The systems level studies aim to develop computationally efficient and reliable models of underlying gene regulatory networks. The quantitative analysis measures and aims to make models for precise kinetic parameters of a system's network component. It also uses properties of network connectivity. Several techniques used in proteomics typically aim to elucidate the expression, localization, interaction and cellular function of proteins. SDS page, two-dimensional electrophoresis, difference in gel electrophoresis are various commonly used gel-based proteomic techniques. Protein extraction is the first step for the proteomic analysis. The protein extraction methods aim that most if not all the proteins in a cell or its organelles are extracted by the procedure and the presence of interfering components are reduced or minimized. Different biological systems, different biological samples pose different type of challenges. For example, serum proteome analysis shown here illustrates that proteins in biological systems such as serum may have difference of several order of magnitude. Albumin and immunoglobulin are the most abundant proteins in serum which mask other low abundant proteins which are present in the 
lower concentration. It is therefore, preferred to remove these high abundant proteins by using affinity chromatography methods. Once the serum has been processed using these chromatography methods, these proteins can be extracted. In bacterial protein sample preparation, sonication is an important step to disrupt the bacterial membrane. Sonication breaks open the cellular contents, the cellular membranes to release the intracellular contents. Protein extraction can be performed by using different methods and protein pellets are reconstituted in lysis buffer for proteomic analysis. Protein quantification is sensitive to detergents or certain ions. Therefore, it is crucial to select the correct quantification method. In Bradford color reagent, transfer of electron converts the dye to its blue form, thereby giving the solution blue color. Absorbance of a standard and unknown protein samples can be measured at 5, 9 to 5 nanometers and protein concentration can be determined from the standard plot of the absorbance values. In gel based proteomics, proteins are commonly analyzed using SDS page and two dimensional gel electrophoresis. Separation in SDS page occurs almost exclusively on the basis of molecular weight, whereas in 2DE the first dimension separation is based on isoelectric point and second dimension separation based on molecular weight. Some of the limitations of two dimensional electrophoresis can be overcome by difference gel electrophoresis or dyes technique. 2DE or dyes in combination with mass spectrometry has been the standard technique for proteome analysis. The two dimensional electrophoresis involves protein separation on a pH gradient based on their isoelectric point using isoelectric focusing followed by separation in second dimension using SDS page. To perform 2DE at the reconstituted protein sample to the rehydration tray and place the IPG strip for rehydration. Isoelectric focusing involves the application of an electric field which causes the proteins to migrate to the position on the pH gradient strips that matches the PI of a specific protein after which it does not move in the electric field owing to the lack of charge. The proteins migrate along the strip and come to a rest at a point where their net charge becomes zero known as isoelectric point. Prior to the second dimension separation, an equilibration step is required. In equilibration, dithiothretol brings about cleavage of the protein disulfide bonds, while iodoestamide prevents reformation of these bonds by binding to the sulfhydryl groups. On STS page gel, proteins get separated on the basis of their molecular weight with the low molecular weight proteins having high mobility and migrating further through the gel and the high molecular weight proteins remains close to the 
point of sample application. Gels can be visualized by different staining methods such as Kumasi staining, silver staining and cyanine dyes. The gel data analysis will be discussed with an application expert of GE Healthcare. The gel analysis involves image processing, detection of spots, making match sets, landmarking, viewing histograms, etc. Various information regarding the spots such as their area, volume, intensity and statistical parameters such as standard deviations can also be calculated. Two dimensional electrophoresis has high resolving power, but it has several limitations such as staining artifacts and reproducibility in gel to gel. Fluorescence two dimensional difference in gel electrophoresis or 2D dyes is an advanced 2D technique that allows for accurate quantitation with statistical confidence while controlling the non-biological variations. In dyes, proteins extracted from different type of cells or tissue sample are labeled with different fluorescent reagents such as Psi2, Psi3 and Psi5 mixed and then separated by two dimensional electrophoresis on a single gel. The proteins are detected separately using the excitation wavelength specific to the different fluorescent reagents Psi2, Psi3 and Psi5. The commercial software such as Decider facilitate the automated analysis of dye gels and provide differential expression analysis, principal component analysis, pattern and discriminant analysis. Two dimensional electrophoresis dye followed by mass spectrometry technique has been applied for many applications. Some of these applications will be discussed in this module of gel based proteomics. Mass spectrometry is technique for protein identification and analysis by production of charged molecular species in vacuum and its separation by magnetic and electric fields based on mass to charge ratio. Mass spectrometry has become the method of choice for analysis of complex protein samples in proteomic study due to its ability to identify thousands of proteins. The gel based techniques typically resolve only products of a few hundred genes at best had low throughput and low dynamic range. To overcome such issues, mass spectrometry has become an important analytical tool in proteomics and in biology in general. It offers high throughput, sensitive and specific analysis for many applications. In this module, we will discuss basic concepts of mass spectrometry, ionization sources, mass analyzers, hybrid MS configurations and quantitative proteomic techniques such as SILAC and ITRAC. The basic components of mass spectrometry involve sample inlet to transfer sample into the ion source, ionization source which converts neutral sample molecules into the gas phase ion, a mass analyzer to separate 
and analyze mass of ionic species detector which measures and amplifies ion current of mass resolved ion and data system to process and analyze data soft ionization techniques such as matrix assisted laser desorption ionization maldi and electro spray ionization esi are now widely used for proteomic applications in maldi protein is mixed with matrix and laser beam ionizes matrix molecules it is an efficient process for generating gas phase ions of peptides and proteins for mass spectrometric detection electro spray ionization requires sample of interest to be in solution and produces gas phase ions from solution obtained from the chromatographic steps the distinguishing feature of electro spray ionization is its ability to produce multiply charged species the mass analyzer disperses all the ions based on their mass to charge ratio and focuses all the mass resolved ions at a single focal point and maximizes their transmission the time of light measures m by z ratio of ions based on the time it takes for ions to fly in the analyzer and strike to the detector the ion trap it traps ions using electrical fields and measures mass by selectively ejecting them to the detector quadrupole it consists of four parallel metal rods and mass separation is accomplished by the stable vibratory motion of ions in a high frequency oscillating electric field that is created by applying direct current and radio frequency potentials to these electrodes some of the latest hybrid ms technologies will be discussed with application experts the orbit trap technology will be discussed with application expert of thermo scientific ltq orbit trap technology shown in video consists of both linear trap and orbit trap it operates by trapping ions radially about a central spindle electrode unlike ion trap the orbit trap uses only electrostatic field to focus and analyze ions another latest ms technology qtof and triple quad will be discussed with application expert of agilent technologies many such advancement in mass spectrometry during the last decade have provided new ways for protein analysis and facilitated proteomic analysis of various biological system the qtof lcms system performs ms ms analysis using a quadrupole hexa collision cell and time of flight mass analyzer the quadrupole selects precursor ions which are further fragmented in collision cell the product ions move to detector and a spectrum is generated protein labeling with stable isotopes are effective methods for quantitative proteome profiling 
using mass spectrometry. A stable isotope labeling by amino acids in cell culture or SILAC, which is a metabolic labeling strategy to encode whole cellular proteome is widely used method for quantitative proteomics. In SILAC, two group of cells are cultured in media that are identical in all the respects except that one contains a heavy isotopic analog of an essential amino acid while the other contains the normal light amino acid. After a number of cell divisions, the grown cells are combined and digested using trypsin. The complex protein mixture is further separated by SDS page to simplify the analysis. Further application is carried out by liquid chromatography and purified peptide fragments are analyzed by MSMS. I track. It is a MS based technique for relative and absolute quantitation of protein. I track reagents are a set of four isobaric amine specific labeling reagents 114, 115, 116, and 117. An I track reagent consists of a reporter group a balancer group and a peptide reactive group. Poor samples are purified on a strong cation exchange as SCX column to remove the excess unbound reagent. These isobaric labels are detected upon fragmentation and release in mass spectrometry. The data obtained from mass spectrometry can be analyzed by using search engines such as mascot. The analysis requires inputs regarding the experimental parameters such as enzyme cleavage, modifications, instruments used, peptide tolerance, etc. The data files generated from MS is uploaded and the search carried out by employing databases such as NCBI, MSDB and SwissProt. Some of the widely recognized technologies that have been used to map protein-protein interactions at large scale such as yeast to hybrid, immunoprecipitation with mass spectrometry and different type of microarray platforms will be discussed in interactomics module. In yeast to hybrid, the binding domain is fused with the bait protein while activation domain is fused with the prey protein. Binding of either one of the fusion protein to the promoter is insufficient to bring about transcription of the gene. When the bait protein bound with the binding domain interacts with the prey protein fused with activation domain, there will be expression of reporter gene which can be easily detected. The gene coding for the protein of interest is expressed in heterologous system such as E. coli. Protein purification can be done by chromatographic procedures to obtain the pure target protein and protein purity is tested on SDS page gels. The array surface can be functionalized with a suitable chemical reagent such as aldehyde and silane terbutizations that will react with groups present on protein surface. Protein is printed onto the array surface in extremely small volumes by using robotic printers. There are two types of protein arrays 
that are commonly used. Forward phase arrays, where immobilized antibody is probed by the test lysate. In reverse phase arrays, cellular lysate is immobilized on the array surface and then probed using detection antibodies specific to the target of interest. In protein detection using direct labeling at the target, all the target proteins are labeled with a fluorescent tag. In sandwich assay, however, a fluorescent tag secondary antibody that recognizes a different epitope on the target antigen binds to it and detected by means of fluorescence. Protein purification is a laborious process and time consuming, which poses several technical challenges. For example, protein purity, protein folding and protein functionality during the purification, immobilization and storage steps. These limitations have motivated the advent of self-free expression based microarrays which carry out in situ transcription and translation and eliminate the drawbacks of traditional cell based methods. Nucleic acid programmable protein arrays NAPA replaces the complex process of spotting purified proteins with simple process of spotting plasmid DNA. By using recombinational cloning and cell free expression system, proteins are produced in vitro and captured on array. In DNA array to protein array DAPA, slides bearing the DNA template and the protein tag capturing agents are assembled face to face with a lysate containing permeable membrane placed in between. The express protein slowly penetrates the membrane and gets immobilized on the slides through its capture agent. Multiple spotting technique MIST it involves addition of template DNA onto the solid array surface and second spotting step involves addition of cell-free lysate. In halotag method, slide is activated with the halotag ligand which captures the express protein through firm covalent interaction thereby preventing any material loss and ensuring oriented capture of proteins. Microarrays have become integral part of clinical and drug discovery process. The protein microarray experiment involves blocking the slides with milk or super block, application of primary antibody and washing with milk followed by incubation of secondary antibody and signal detection. Although microarray experiments are simple, but data analysis is very challenging. Biological research has witnessed a paradigm shift from focused reductionist approaches to a greater dependence on data provided by large omic techniques to provide insight into the biological systems and organization of physiological networks. The microarray scanning and data analysis will be discussed with application expert of SPINCO for molecular devices. Single or multiple slides can be scanned by using a scanner Using defined scanning parameters, robotic arms can select lights and position it for the scanning. 
the laser power wheel can adjust the laser strength. Fluorescent signal is collected from the photomultiplier tubes. Each channel is scanned sequentially and TIFF images are saved. Data analysis becomes crucial to make sense out of massive amount of data. It is very important to have good understanding of both the biology involved and the analytical techniques rather than relying only on the software. Challenges of microarray data analysis will be discussed with Professor Sudesh from Tulane University, USA. Protein microarrays have found wide applications for discovery and functional proteomic studies. Microarrays are used for analyzing both antigens and antibodies in blood samples and other biological fluids for biomarker discovery. Some of the representative applications will be discussed in this module. Several conventional label based detection approaches such as fluorescence, chemiluminescence and radioisotopes are in practice, but researchers are exploring methods for label free analysis to get rid of interference due to the tagging molecules and reduce the complexity and assay timing. The label free techniques rely on measurement of inherent properties of the query molecules such as mass, dielectric properties and allow direct rapid real time measurement of biomolecules in high throughput manner eliminating the requirement of secondary reactants. Many label free techniques such as SPR, SPR imaging, ellipsometry, interference based and nanotechnique based techniques are emerging rapidly as a potential complement to the labeling methods and it will be discussed in module of label free detection techniques. SPR based biosensors are in great demand as they provide label free real time detection of biomolecular interactions. SPR sensograms describes the changes in SPR signal versus time. Since the introduction of BioCore SPR instrument, the SPR spectroscopy has been widely used to characterize biological surfaces and monitor biomolecular binding events. The BioCore technology will be discussed with research product expert of GE Healthcare. This optical biosensor can be used to monitor macromolecular interactions in real time without labeling requirements. The SPR biosensors have played an important role in research into biomolecules and their interactions. Performing good SPR experiment and accurate interpretation of binding reactions from biosensors are always very challenging. Performing good SPR experiments, data collection and processing can eliminate artifacts and provide good quality data. The success of SPR experiments depends on the kinetic measurement in real time, monitoring adsorption of unlabeled analyte molecules to the surface and ability to monitor weakly bound 
interactions due to high surface sensitivity. Detailed guidelines for the SPR data analysis has been provided by the researchers and it will be discussed in this module. Several nano techniques such as carbon nanotubes, nanowires, quantum dots, gold nanoparticles are increasingly being used for proteomic applications in the field of nanoproteomics. As demonstrated here, the binding of target protein to the functionalized carbon nanowires lead to detectable changes in electrical conductance. The phenomenon of diffraction and interference and use of diffraction based biosensors will be discussed with Professor Cynthia Goh from University of Toronto. These techniques hold great promise to become a technically robust and user friendly platform for clinical and diagnostic studies. This century is considered as century of biology in which life science research is undergoing a profound transformation by employing various omic technologies. Unraveling structural and functional details of proteins at the proteome scale is very daunting task. However, proteomics has come to mean virtually everything in protein research and it has quickly evolved to become an integral aspect of human biology and medicine. Today I gave you an overview of modules and lectures which will be discussed in this course. It was not possible to discuss all the modules and all the details, but during the subsequent lectures, I will take you to a journey of protein and proteomics research by providing basic concepts and details of proteomic techniques. I hope it will enthuse you to learn about proteomic techniques and proteomic concepts. Thank you for your attention.